like one more. <sighs> We'd all like some quick and simple ways to improve our health, but we're bombarded with often conflicting advice. So, if you were going to do just one thing to improve your mental and physical well-being, what should it be? Maybe a few squats to enhance your brain. Or more bacteria to improve your mood. Or even brr, a cold shower to boost your immune system. I'm Dr. Michael Mosley and this is Just One Thing, where each episode we'll explore one thing you can start doing tomorrow to improve your health or life in ways you might not expect. I'm doing something that I try to do every day. <sighs> Press-ups. We all know that aerobic exercise like running, walking, swimming or cycling is good for your heart and lungs. Ooh. But on top of that, there is just one thing I recommend you add to your daily routine. Resistance exercise like press-ups. There's fascinating new research on the benefits of strength workouts. Have a few minutes of daily resistance exercises where you don't need any special equipment can boost your brain as well as your muscles. And there's two forms of strength exercise that I find particularly effective and easy to fit into my life. The first is press-ups. Uh, or if you're American, the push-up. Ooh, one of the best no-cost ways of building upper body strength. So you can probably... Here, I'm doing them right now. Not only do press-ups keep you toned, yeah, but there is evidence that resistance training can improve your sleep. Right, one more. Nah, enough for now. And the second form of resistance exercise I recommend you try doing on a regular basis is the squat. As we'll discover, it is one of the best exercises around for improving your brain function in surprising ways. So how easy are they to fit into your daily routine? Let's find out. Hello, um, my name's Andy. I'm 53 years old. I live in Sheffield. I describe myself as very happy in life at the minute. I'm a keen walker. But kind of that's the only exercise that I've ever enjoyed. I've done really well at avoiding exercise <laughs> most of my life. Um, so, I'm up for making changes. To see just how easy or not they are to do, we're asking Andy to try building press-ups into his daily routine. Press-ups are a fast and effective way of building upper body strength. They can be done anywhere and don't need special equipment, which is why I love them. They work your triceps, your pectoral muscles, and can also strengthen your lower back and abdominal muscles. Not bragging, but I try to do 40 press-ups most days, at least in part because of research showing that doing press-ups may cut my risk of heart disease. They certainly seem to be a good predictor of heart health. There was a recent study in the U.S. involving firefighters which found that those who could do 40 press-ups or more in one go when they were in their late 30s were far less likely to have a heart attack over the next 10 years than those who could manage less than 10. Like any exercise, it is vital you start gradually if you don't want to pull a muscle or get tendonitis. You could start by doing a few press-ups against the wall or do a few while kneeling. If, however, you have an existing back problem, do talk to your doctor before adding press-ups into your daily routine. It is also really important that you do them correctly, so check out the NHS website. Let's see if Andy is beginning to feel the burn. Well, I've just finished my first 12 press-ups. Yeah, it was all right. It, it, it was pretty fine. It's been a while since I've done any press-ups. Things I noticed, and I guess it's with being older, uh, sort of stress it put on my elbows <laughs> more than anything else so I don't know if my elbows will hold up to doing a great number of press ups but anyway you never know they might get stronger as I get going I've got no ill effects from the press ups yesterday although interestingly I could feel the muscles in my you know around my sides and my around my armpits felt a little bit achy I hope I've convinced you that doing some press-ups is really worthwhile. 
Professor Damien Bailey is Professor of Physiology and Biochemistry and Director of the Neurovascular Research Laboratory at the University of South Wales. So, Professor Bailey, you've been looking at exercises that specifically target the brain. What have you found? So, we've looked at not the usual exercises like running or walking or cycling, but uh, focusing on squat stands. So, intermittent squatting down and standing up. This is an intelligent way of exercising, if you like, in as much as we're intermittently challenging the brain with an increase in blood flow and then a decrease in blood flow. And this toing and froing from high flow, low flow, challenges the inner lining of the arteries that supply blood to the brain. And we think it's it's good because it releases the good chemicals that the brain needs to grow the things it needs to grow to become more intelligent. In terms of actual you know, um, clinical evidence that exercise can impact the brain. Have you actually seen brain studies demonstrating that what you're advocating actually leads to measurable brain change? The evidence is becoming increasingly clear that different parts of the brain grow and blood flow to different parts of the brain can also increase, including, for example, the hippocampus. Um, I mean, a recent study conducted in Cardiff just recently identified um, that uh, uh, an acute bout of exercise increased blood flow through the hippocampus um, by quite a remarkable uh, amount. And of course, we know that the hippocampus is a key part as we get older. It tends to get a bit smaller. Blood flow through the hippocampus decreases, and this has been linked to the cognitive decline and the neurodegeneration, such as Alzheimer's, for example, that occurs in later life. Is there evidence that doing press-ups or squats is more effective than, say, going for a walk or a run? Yeah, great great question. (laughs) What we've identified is that uh, five minutes or three to five minutes of squat stands, three to five minutes, three times a week, it's even more effective in terms of how well the brain is adapting and performing and responding to that exercise than 30 minutes of steady state exercise. So uh, it's almost a form, a mini form of interval training for the brain. And you're not huffing and puffing. You're not completely out of breath. um, And you really do feel as if you're working less hard aerobically compared to, for example, a 30-minute run or a walk. That is super um, (laughs) interesting and exciting because I do press-ups and squats. Now, in terms of press-ups, you describe the sort of intermittent nature. I mean, I do them and then I stop and then sometimes I do a few more, but often I don't. Would I be doing better if I did it in bursts? Yeah, I I think um, some is better than none, uh, as the old adage goes, and, um, you know, Doing a press-up is it is very difficult, as we all know. Um, usually we watch experts doing it, and it looks terribly easy. Um, but uh, doing it within your own limitations and then stopping and then starting up again and, and even having your knees on the floor so that you uh, relax your upper body a little bit more so that you can actually do the press-up. So it's this general action of your head moving up and your head moving down. So it's this working against gravity that the brain, you know, we've evolved uh, needing gravity. So when you start to play around with gravity, it's not that the brain doesn't like it, but it works jolly hard to try to ad- to try to defend blood flow and the fuel, the oxygen and the glucose it needs. So, you know, this is the stimulus, we think, which is fundamental to optimizing the brain to exercise. So if you're doing uh, your press-ups, your squats, and you're getting this sudden surge of blood going to parts of your brain, why is that a good thing? We're becoming increasingly more aware now. It's not just the amount that you flow, but it's the quality of the flow. And so... When we actually run these tests and you measure blood flow to the brain, the noise that the brain is making, you know, you've got this huge whoosh, whoosh, whooshing of blood moving into the brain as the participant squats. And then as the participant stands up, you have this very rapid petering out of blood flow to the brain, of course, because the participant is working against gravity. We think having this intermittency of flow is what optimizes the release of some of the 
what we would call the good soldiers, the good molecules that can then move into the brain, into the brain tissue and stimulate new connections, new neurons, new cells. Um, and, and ultimately, we think um, this is the optimal way of trying to train the brain. If you are frail and you haven't done much exercise for a while, should you go and talk to your doctor before beginning a regime like this or is it reasonably safe? No, I, I mean, I would always recommend, um, you know, having a conversation with the GP. You know, we've actually identified that people that have had a life of doing no exercise, they actually respond even better to some of these exercises than people who have been active and then start to engage in a different exercise training protocol. So the brain has still got ample opportunity to benefit from these types of exercise. So, you know, we would certainly encourage people to be engaging in exercise, uh, but uh, just ensuring that blood pressure uh, is under control. Do you do um, press-ups and squats yourself? Yes, I mean, I'm one of these chaps. I've, you know, spent a lifetime of being physically active, and um, I spent a lot of time sitting in front of computers working. So it's, uh, you know, it's great to be able to exercise. And the evidence is very clear now, Michael. It's a combination of aerobic training and resistance training, and it's becoming increasingly more clear that we need to be smart when we train the brain. You know, that intelligent exercise, so exercise like the squat stands, like the press-ups, and even doing this whilst doing some cognitive tasks, for example, example, Sudoku or crossword reading where you impose an extra load on top of the exercise to really stimulate adaptation in the brain. So I do Sudoku. Should I be doing it while I'm squatting? <laughs> you know, if you can do that, I mean, it's quite impressive. <laughs> Things like listening to music, uh, trying to read as you're exercising, it's the double whammy, and uh, it can certainly optimize adaptation. Thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. I shall go off and uh, do a three-minute squat stand immediately after this. Fantastic. And don't forget the Sudoku. So it seems there is loads more to squats and press-ups than just getting a bit fitter. Let's check back in with Andy and see if he's feeling any different. I've been supposed to be doing press-ups and squats. I have done them a few times. When I actually do them, I do quite enjoy it. I like the feeling that I get afterwards. I like, you know, I can feel that my muscles are, I don't know, more, more pumped up. It does feel nice. And I feel that the exercise in particular has made a positive difference to my mental health. And so I, I will continue with that and... Uh, I will try and incorporate the press-ups and the squats because I can feel that it, it's making a big difference to me. Right, so here I am doing a few more squats. I do love walking and cycling and I also make myself do the occasional run. But just one thing I would recommend you try fitting into your daily life are press-ups and squats. I do them first thing when I get out of bed because I know if I don't do them then, I'll probably forget to do them later in the day. They give you a full body workout, help your heart, and may even boost your brain power. Ah, amazing. But do start slowly, and if you're frail, check with your doctor first. So that's it. It's just one thing you can incorporate into your daily routine, which really could benefit your body and life. If you want to hear more of the series, then watch.